In this video I would like to reveal some of the secrets, what is behind the fancy word representativeness and sampling. So let's say you are going to do some research or you are going to do some survey and you would like to have it really, as we call it, unbiased. You would like to really have the relevant data. Well, and I would begin with the basic questions. Why do we need to use some sample? So let's draw some population. So let's say this is a population of a country. So this is something we call the population. And maybe we are going to introduce a new set of t-shirts and we are wondering about which sizes we should produce. So the best for us would be to measure all of the people in the country and according to this we would decide what what size of t-shirts we should produce and we call this we call this truth about the population we call it parameter so this is parameter and that is the actual truth that is there about the population but the issue is that this would simply be too expensive if there are 500 million people we simply cannot measure all of them it would cost too much money and actually it would be somehow impossible because of some fertility and mortality so actually some mathematicians say that the population as it is understood is infinite so what we have to do is that we are going to choose some sample so let's say we will choose a sample of 1000 people so this is our sample and we will try to discover something called statistic. Statistic. That is uh, the, our guess or our best measure of how, how close can we get to the parameters. So to discover the truth. And we are just hoping that, that the statistic that we have revealed is truth. And to, to somehow ensure that, that we are doing the things correctly, we need to use some representativeness and sampling. So in this something called the random sampling, so in the random sampling, all members of the population have an equal chance of inclusion in the sample. What does this mean? So if there is 500 million people, so there are 500 million people in the population and our sample is going to be 1000 people, so every person has got, and let me count, Every person has got chance of getting into, into our sample one, two, five, hundred thousand. So every person has got the same chance of getting into our sample. This is the basic idea. And if you understand this definition, you are fine. And the rest of what I'm going to talk about here will be quite simple for you. We are going to use quite often something called the random numbers and you can, I have brought several of them. So these are the random numbers, random numbers. And now I will bring several examples of, of sampling or surveying and we will quite often be able to use the random numbers to really ensure that every member has got the same chance of getting into our survey. At first, maybe you can have some household, some household service service so that your your interviewers are going to come to the door and they are going to ask several questions of people who are living there and now imagine your population it, it maybe can look like this you can have only 1000 people because you do not have more money so only 1000 houses you can choose how you are going to do that well let's say you will divide your population into into some quadrants so let's say this will be one two three four and from each you will decide that okay each of these we are going to equal to some let's say three more one two three so we have one two three and again one two three and three more one two and three so you you will have after all some some parts of your population and now maybe let's say within each part there are going to be 1000 houses so 1000 houses but how to choose among these houses well for instance you can choose our table of random numbers so let's say the they are ordered so these houses are ordered from 1 to 1000 and now you will choose the table this is completely random number it is actually quite hard to find out random numbers but that is topic for a different video so you will you will choose according to the numbers you will choose the house that is 19th on the position of 93 43 8 
and so on and so on until you will get let's say from from every of these quadrant you will have uh, let's say 500 and you will get 500 from each of these this 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 survey or this sampling will ensure that really every member has got the same chance but let's pick another example it can be some some sampling for site so let's say you have got some shopping mall some shopping mall and now it is a bit different because the visitors are walking they are walkers they are not in household they are coming and leaving how will you ensure that you really have got some some really representative sample well you may, you have to give some exact instructions some exact instructions to your interviewer well th this can be do not pick all on your own or do not choose your respondents simply go and take him because sometimes the interviewers may have a tendency of picking people who look more friendly or are younger so they, they really need to have a strict instructions but this is a slightly different topic so let's let's move to some better example well let's say you are surveying on a on a street on a street and you would like to know some population parameter you would like to know what is the average age of people who are in this uh, area you can use something called quota sampling quota quota sampling and this is and i will rewrite the word you give your your people your employees who are like collecting the data you will give them some quotas quotas and these can be for instance you know that 12 percent of people within your population are elder people so you give them that out of out of 100 people 100 people 12 needs to be needs to be in the age group of 65 plus this is a quota but what is important about quota sampling is that you need to have some some prior you need to have some background information so you need some background some background and this can be really the, the statistics as I told you. Well, you know that there are 12% of elder people in the population. So if your sample should be really representative, every 12 person in, in, your, in your statistics or in your data should be at the age of 65 plus. And again, maybe the last important thing about the sampling is the sample size. So sample, sample size. Quite often there is a misconception and people think that you should have some share or you should have some percentage. So let's say you should have a 10% of the population. You should cover 10% of population in order to really have some representative sample. But that is not true. You really should follow this, this basic rule that everyone should have an equal chance. And instead of, of this, this uh, false rule of some share of the population, you should focus on the sample size itself. So let's say quite often it is 1000. So that you should have at least 1000 respondents. Doesn't matter if your population is uh, 500 million people or it is 50,000. Just in case that your population would be really small, so that your population would be, uh, let's say, 1000 people thousand people then you would think about some percentages so you would like to have at least 10 percent but you will learn more about this in the statistics what is important is to remember that you care more about the sample size itself than about his relationship or its share according to the population so what is important to remember from this video the basic rule of representativeness that every member of the population should have an equal chance of inclusion in the sample then just imagine what is the population and what is the sample that there is some parameter we would like to get close to and we would like to get close to it thanks to that that we really create some representative sampling maybe using the random numbers we can also use quota sampling but we need some background information and we also need to have some sample size let's say thousand people